Yeah. We're playing one of our songs that we never play acoustically for you guys. Acoustically. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Now, I know a lot of you probably know the words, so please sing along with us. Are you going to do that for me? A yes? Is that a yes? We drown in all our sins, we drown in our mistakes, fueled by the flood we pay in blood, the curse of Crystal Lake. We've all been laid to rest, our epitaph waits, mommy knows best, you're all doomed. Scene? Did you have to do any, you know, work with any of the other actors that were maybe already cast? I just have to say, my me getting the role was probably the easiest thing in the world because my sister Camilla had gone in uh, for the casting because for one for one person it was not a twin role, and she happened to mention during the casting that she had a twin. And Joe had apparently in his mind thought that. Maybe it would be great to have twins, but never thought about you know, casting for it. So suddenly he was like, bring your sister in. And so all I had to do was literally, I don't know what I had to say, I had one sentence like, ooh, you know, let's go swimming. And I'm in. So that was uh, pretty cool. Easy. Actually, you know, uh, the, I was not 
great friend of the uh, production. I mean, I was. They weren't, you know, they didn't like me so much. And because I had uh, some ideas about twins in the movie and uh, setting the movie, you know, changing it from the previous uh, uh, previous Fridays. So I did some things that were big, big problems for production. I wanted to put a kid, Tommy, in. And you know, it's really difficult when you work with a, a child because they can only work certain hours and they have to have a teacher there and all that business. But I thought it would be interesting to have a kid in the movie. I did want twins. I had twins in mind early on. I may not have expressed it, but twins were part of the plan. And I set it in the rain, which is a gigantic production problem. And I added a tub. So <laughs> you, I mean, you, couldn't have, you couldn't have made it more difficult, right? And lots of water scenes and go, things going through glass, which I like to do in movies. In my films, I, I often break a television or something on somebody's somewhere. <laughs> and something bad comes out of the water usually, or something good comes out of the water, but there's always something coming out of the water. So there's some things I kept plagiarizing myself for. But the twin thing was in my mind. Now, again, I'm not sure that it didn't happen the way you said, but I was thinking about twins from the beginning of this. Friday the 13th was already a known franchise. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I don't remember much about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, there, there was a pretty sophisticated uh, casting uh, situation. We worked with uh, Fern Champion and Pamela Vasper, who really were good casting people back then. And the truth is that all of your characters, and I think it helps, it helped me tremendously in making the film, but all of your characters or personalities that were crafted in the script. I mean, it's just not like we found you guys and you played yourselves in it. Those characters were crafted exactly as you played them. And, you know, casting, usually for low budget movies at that time, pretty simple process. You know, a lot of people came in and said, okay, fine, I'll take this one and that one. This was different. I mean, they really did look for people who were right for the written script, okay? And they, and they also brought, brought them in and they met several people. I was there, and uh, Frank Mancuso Jr., the producer, was there. A couple of other people from the production were there. And, you know, we talked about it. We argued about all of you. Sometimes I won, sometimes I didn't. I won't tell you. <laughs> but uh, we, we argued about all of you. We argued about Crispin, in particular. Because we all knew Crispin was great, and we all knew Crispin was nuts. <laughs> and, you know, so, <laughs> but uh, I won that one, you know. And we also argued not only about casting, we argued about Tom Savini. Because they, Tom had done the first, as you know, first Friday the 13th. And then they didn't bring him back. And, you know, you've said that maybe it's because he was busy on other films, and maybe it is they just didn't want to bring him back. They tried other people, Hollywood people. Tom was in Pittsburgh. And so it was a struggle to bring him back. I had a fight for Tom to come back. Because the production company, this is not Paramount, this is the production company that delivers the film to Paramount. They were not convinced that Jason had to look like the original kid who came out of the lake. They thought to be a whole new Jason was, you know, designed so there would be a great shock and create a new character when the mask came on. And I was very concerned with having Jason be related to the kid who came out of the water. You know, because that's him. So, I really fought for Savini, and it was a long and hard fight. But in the end, you know, they, uh, they pretty much gave me as a director what I wanted to, but I had to really argue for it and persuade people about why I wanted it, not just because I knew it. And I think it was a good, a really wonderful choice, because I think he's done great on the uh, effects on the kills, you know, which we, uh, you know, we talk a lot about them and design them together. And uh, I think his look of uh, uh, the unmasked Jason was good for the film. It was a good fight. Thank you for fighting for Tom. Yeah. Paid off, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, you
you were talking about you know the casting and, and you know making sure the characters are real in the script. It's funny, my friend uh, went out for a minute and uh, he hadn't seen the movie for a while, so he doesn't memorize it like us nerds. And uh, he came back and he's like, "Oh, who died?" I'm like, "Oh, nobody." He's like, "Well, everybody was cheering." I'm like, "Oh, that was everybody cheering for um, for Crispin, you know, <laughs> getting his uh, his compliment." Um, and so, you know, that, that's one thing, and it really yeah, it kind of clicked in. It's like, oh, this is probably, this is one of the few movies in this series where the whole audience can applaud a moment that's not a death, because these characters, the guys you play, and all your other co-stars, they were really likable in this one, and they felt more real than uh, most of the movies in the series. And so, good job on that, all of you. You know, that, that's one thing I remember reading the, uh, the review in the New York Times. And I remember the critic in the New York Times said that this Friday was the most offensive out of all the ones that they had seen. <laughs> and the reason they said that was because that the that they actually liked the cast, that the actors brought like real there, you know, there's real people in relationships a little bit that's developed in this film, and so that when the killings happen, that it's all the more sort of jarring and disturbing um, because of the you know the, the we don't want him to do nothing, so that would be a very boring movie. Um, uh, for Judy and, and, and Lawrence, uh, you guys are part of the, you know, the, the main group. Uh, did you guys, how much of you did you know each other beforehand, any of your co-stars? Did, you did you get a chance to like kind of hang out and bond for a bit before filming?
Uh, and Camila, you, uh, what happened with the bed? The, the, was the bed breaking? Was that, the most, was that in the script? Was that some of the plan, or was that spontaneous? Okay, now I'm beginning to think that everything was set up. It, it, we did. We, we, we didn't rehearse, and suddenly, and I, you know, actresses always think that uh, I was already struggling with like Zoom, but, and suddenly this bed breaks. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm in there with Crispin, who's already stuttering because he's getting really like excited about the scene. And, uh, <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to wear a top for it, so he told the whole crew, if she's not wearing a top, then I'll take my boxes off, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah. Was, it was it set up? No, it was not supposed to break. You no. see, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, but you're known as the one who broke the bed for Christmas, so it's... Yes. <laughs> that one. <laughs> um... You guys kind of got off easy when it comes to the death scenes because you had stunts kind of doing the the bulk of the, uh, the work there. Um, did you do? Not me. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that. That's the, we, we have the we have the spectrum here. We have the easy and the worst. Um, uh, did, how much how much of your death scenes was actually? Did you get involved? Well, I think I think that's one of the great things of actually seeing a movie for real at the end because when you're actually doing um, the acting. Um, you know, you're aware that you're doing a horror movie and you're aware that you're going to die and whatever, but when, you're, when you do have a stunt that basically does your death, I mean, I just had the, you know, the dance and a little bit of the flirt and this and that, and then suddenly I'm going out in the rain and suddenly it's thunder and, you know, lightning, but I, I don't actually experience my own death, so it, it takes seeing it on the screen to really see how it all comes together, you know, the stunt. That was a complete stunt, obviously, doing that. So, yeah, I have, I have so you don't see the whole, you don't get the feeling of the whole movie. So, so to me, it, it was our first movie as well. So it, it, you're very green at that stage. You haven't, I've never experienced a stunt a person taking over, and and I had to stick my head out of that window, and then and then he grabbed me, but then I had to hold back, and then, then the next, Time there was a stunt girl dressed up in exactly my outfit, and she bounced on a trampoline and went out of the window onto a mattress on the top of the car. And I was like watching from down below, and I'm like seeing supposedly myself falling out of a window. It's just very surreal. Well, she hits the car. She actually hits the car. Well, she she but she yeah. she, she launches herself. Yeah. But she landed on the mattress the first time, and then didn't she? Didn't she? Hits the car. She hits the car. Hits the car. Hits the, the roof, and then falls up onto. Oh, ah, so okay. They Sorry. have no and in fact, <laughs> And in fact, if you, if you look at it, you do not get a stunt double. Uh, for, the, for those that don't listen to the commentaries or read the books or anything, how exactly was your death scene pulled off? <laughs> okay, anyway, just the, you can pay attention to the, to the car, you can see that it was two takes that uh, the car was hit by that stunt woman twice. She went out the window, hit it, and they missed sinking the blowing of the windows because those are done with explosives. So the windows are all rigged for explosives, and it's supposed to sink with when you know, the character hits the roof, and they missed it. So we threw her a second time, and it's <laughs> but we do it. Wow. one car. <laughs> and you, <laughs> no stun. No stun. No stun woman for mine. Damn it. Uh, how exactly was your, you, you had to stand, you, you were standing, and then they had the, the body yeah. behind you? Yeah, there was the raft, and there's a hole cut into the raft, and I was standing straight up, and then leaning over, and then a big bat was put on me, so it looks like I'm lying down. How long we were in the water, if you remember? Oh, just a few minutes. So she was blue, bluish. <laughs> no, the truth is, the truth is, no, 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 really, but Judy, the truth is, that was an incredibly difficult thing to do, and we were very stupid about the way we did it. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of legend now. Uh, you know, Ted White, who played Jason, was, was a wonderful, wonderful uh, stunt guy, and really deserves to be respected based on how much he had done in the business before. 
uh, and uh, you know, he, he took the job of being Jason, I think just because he wanted to get some work at that time. He was already something like 60 years old. I picked him, there were a bunch of stunt people to play Jason, younger guys, and some people who were not stunt players, they had recommended also to play Jason, who were just actors. So I wanted a stunt person because I knew we'd have to have these weapons, even though the weapons are prepared so they can be close to actors, they still can hurt someone. So I wanted a stunt guy who really knew how to, how to handle that. And also, you know, he's used to being very specific about a stunt, stunt person, as you know, used to being very specific about hitting marks and you know, just exactly what he has to do. Now, there's been a lot of legend that you know, paints this picture that he and I were in combat during. Actually, we hardly ever talked. Uh, he might have talked to, you know, he, he was your protector, he's you know, cowboy protecting you. This. And he never talked to me about that. But he talked to me about feeling cold himself. You know, when he had a wetsuit on and you didn't. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I did have a wetsuit on from here down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, we had the, when we had the casting, when we had your casting, the casting of your, you know, place. Yeah, well, the cold yeah. Like yeah. 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 But it was it was it was incredibly cold. Um, it was there wasn't an option to not shoot. The company would not give us the day to not shoot. Um, very incredibly difficult thing, and, and it's interesting because for me, when I watch the film, like when I watch it with you guys now, it doesn't feel cold when you look at that. You know, it does not feel cold. You you sell it. Completely, you don't get a sense of how miserable it was because the crew was bundled up and stuff, you know, and you're out there. But, you know, the film like this is always about distraction. It's always, it's turning us all, audience and characters, into voyeurs. Tommy looking out the window, you know, Ted looking at the film. It's all, they're all voyeurs, even voyeurs of the gore as well, you know. So, and we, watching the films, become voyeurs. So it's all a matter of distraction. So that, you know, we're looking at that, or Axel is looking at the television, you know, the, the workout stuff on the television, cheesy stuff, and gets his head twisted around. Uh, it's, a, it's about that kind of shell game, where we're trying to throw your attention to something very, very base, so that, you know, you can feel the impact of the hit harder. Sometimes we succeed in that, and sometimes I can see, you know, I, I feel we haven't succeeded. But uh, that's, that's really what it's about. And it's the same thing with the relationships. What I love about the cast that we had on this, on this movie, more than other casts that I've had on other films, it, you felt, I felt the relationships developing. I cared about them. I cared about, you know, uh, uh, you know Sarah, and, you know, and coming out finally, being impressed by your character, impressed by Sam, Judy, uh, and changing her behavior, finding, find, falling in love, and of course, then dying. Uh, I like Crispin and Camilla a lot. I mean, it was wonderful to see him finally triumph. Ted comes up with nothing, because he's a pain in the ass. But the thing is, actually, the only two who don't get anything out of it is Ted and the kid, Tommy. <laughs> Everybody else seems to look out. Well, Trish, but but, but the, I I believe the relationships in in the comic book context of a film like this, I felt that these people were getting to know each other. You cared about them a little bit, and that was special. And also, they all had very different characters, and that was special too. And the cast accomplished that for us. You know, so I think we're very lucky with it. With, with, with that. Lawrence, my theory is that. You, Teddy is actually Gary from Last American Version. He was, he was so devastated <laughs> at the end. He's like, you know what, I'm moving out of this town. I'm going to you know, reinvent myself. I'm going to be this Because you still don't get any in this one. And you, and then you get killed. Uh, but you're a death scene. You actually get off kind of easy in this one. You, you, the, it's in the back. And then how, how did yours work? I actually don't get off at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. You, see, you always stand in front of the fat guy. Here's our first <laughs> Let's do it on the stage. Oh, perfect, that'll work. Thank you. Yeah. There you go.
Perfect. Wherever you like. I'm gonna borrow a little real estate here. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Should be prepped, I think. Yeah, you'll have plenty for today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sorry, I had to get you guys down there. So sorry. There we go. There we there go. go. Thank Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. That was such she an awkward spot. She wants to take a picture of us all. Oh, sure. Uh, can I go do it there? Yeah, that'll work. Where to? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. What's that? Oh, they can't even see it. What did we just see? Because uh, apparently, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. There it is. Friday the 13th, part four, final chapter. Your favorite in the series, right? Well, I can't, I can't choose. I can't choose. It's like you're, it, like, it's like you have how many one, movies in the series? One, one through eight, I, I can watch. I don't care. It's not like, like they're all your kids, right? You can choose one. Whatever, whatever. See, he can't okay, choose I one. I want him to choose one on, on video, but he won't. All right. It's not... Oh, I oh, love this oh. one, but I grew up on Six. Six is my favorite Six one. Six is your favorite? Listen, Alice Cooper. You got Alice Cooper. Right. You got, like, freaking... Come on. You got Jason. Like, that's two things I love right there. So, yeah. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Right. Exclusive. You heard it on my video right here. Watch this video, too, because we got the same cool stuff, too. But you got your signatures? Yeah. Yeah? I got everyone. Perfect. Yeah, but that was cool. See, the 35 millimeter print. I mean, you can tell, too. It was oh, like, yeah, it was you can tell, that went through the, uh -huh, all the pops and everything, it was cool. But yeah, and, uh, and the director, and the twins, and Judy Aronson, and then Lawrence, that was oh, pretty well, cool. There was, there was two sets of twins. There's two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you see what he did there? Yeah. So, but yeah, dude, we got, we got something else going on tomorrow, too. Oh, that's so right. Should be, to be continued this video should right we, here. Yeah, should we right? say it, or just, maybe they'll, they'll check it out. We'll see right. it. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it'll be on the title, so it's not really surprising, but, you know. But okay. man, squad, man, hanging out. It's been a while, right? Yeah. So, so that is cool. So, so the next one, we'll see. And then another one the following weekend, too. That one's going to be fun. Midsummer Scream. That's, gonna be fun. Midsummer That's Midsummer right. Screen. So, talk about it. Look, they're closing everything down behind us. Yeah. It's time to go. They're taking the marquee down. We got to go. Peace. Go. <laughs>